Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're doing something a little different, a deep dive, you could say. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so we're going to be stepping into the world, well, the world, as seen by a sculptor, Hideki Anuma. Sculpture. Hmm. Okay. And he's he's curated a collection of news and recommendations. It's kind of like a snapshot from November 12th, 2024. And honestly, I was looking over this stuff. What kind of stuff? It's a wild mix, really. Yeah. We're talking video game releases. We've got art exhibitions in there, political news even. Uh, okay, so kind of all over the place. Totally. There's even a healthier ramen tip, I oh, think. Oh, okay, I, that I'm interested in. Right. So it's going to be fun. It's like this treasure map, you know, through all these parts of culture and society. But like... But all seen through the eyes of a sculptor, right? Yeah, through that artistic lens, exactly. So first up, right off the bat, he's super excited about the Dragon Quest Three remake. Ah, Dragon Quest. Yeah, big in Japan. But I can imagine some listeners might not. Yeah, so can you give us some context? Why is this such a big deal? Well, think about it this way. Imagine, like, the original Super Mario Bros., something super iconic, got a total modern makeover. Okay, I see. That's what Dragon Quest is in Japan, like a cultural touchstone. Wow. Like generations of gamers grew up with this. It's pure nostalgia, you know? So this remake, it's not just a game, it's an event culturally. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it seems like Yunuma's really tapped into all that. Definitely. But then, and this is where it gets interesting, right next to Dragon Quest, he's recommending a very specific Starbucks order. Wait. <laughs> really? Yeah, the creme brulee latte, but with almond milk and extra caramel sauce. That's that's quite a jump. Right. It feels like we went from like epic game release to like coffee break. Yeah. But I mean, think about it. Artists, especially sculptors, they're all about the details, the subtleties. Mm, yeah. Like shaping a curve just right, finding the perfect form. Maybe this latte thing is like in Enuma finding that perfection in his everyday life. Huh. Like a tiny masterpiece in a cup. I like that. It makes me rethink my own coffee choices. <laughs> Okay, but moving on. Music now. Inuma recommends something called, and I'm reading this verbatim, A Woman's Lifelong Friend, A Fantasy Story Told Through Pictures. Wow, that's that's a title. Right. I have no idea what this is. Is it even real? I mean, tough to say for sure without more info. It could be obscure or like a performance piece. Who knows? Yeah. Sure. But what it does show is that Enuma, he loves stories no matter the form. Yeah, whether it's music or visual art or even a video game, he's drawn to that. Absolutely. That narrative thread seems really important to him. Speaking of which, captivating performances. He mentions a the first take video with Masayuki Suzuki. Have you seen these? Oh, yeah, those one take recordings are everywhere now. They're so popular. What do you think draws people to them, especially an artist like Enuma? It's raw, you know? It's like stripping away all the studio magic. It's just the artist and their talent laid bare. Yeah, I get that. Maybe Enuma sees a connection to sculpture, like capturing a moment and emotion in its purest form. That's interesting, that link between performance art and something is, well, still a sculpture. Yeah. Okay, now, into the art world specifically, in Enuma has some exhibition recommendations. He seems really into a couple. Okay, which ones? So there's Honeycomb Garden and Clay Figurines. Already the name sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those clay figurines, those are dogu, right? Yeah, dogu. They're ancient. Wow, he's seriously ancient, thousands of years old. They're a huge part of Japanese art history. Wow, so for a modern sculptor like Enuma to be recommending them, that says something. Oh, absolutely. They're timeless, these figures. Sometimes humans, sometimes animals. So stylized. Mm -hmm. And they give us a glimpse into, like, ancient beliefs, spiritual stuff. It's fascinating. So they're not just beautiful. They're, like culturally significant too exactly they connect us to this whole lineage of japanese artistic expression it's powerful stuff wow okay so that's one and the other one he mentioned is the mitsubishi ichigokan museum it's near tokyo station he even mentioned they have a new smaller exhibition room interesting what do you make of that i think inuma likes accessibility you know a museum in a busy hub plus a space for maybe more intimate exhibits it's like making art a part of everyday life not just some exclusive thing exactly yeah and then he goes even broader encouraging people to check out international art events specifically the bangkok art bl oh that's cool so he's not just focused on japan he's looking globally yeah like always searching for new inspiration new perspectives biennales are like these melting pots for artists from all over they spark new ideas, push boundaries. It's impressive how he moves between like ancient traditions and these cutting edge global trends. He really does. But here's what caught my eye. Amidst all this art talk, 
He's also really into political news. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. He even says he should maybe incorporate it more into his own work. Hmm, that's a thought. Throughout history, artists have been commentators on their times, using their art to reflect and critique. Yeah, and maybe Anuma sees that potential in his own work to yeah. spark dialogue, you know? Absolutely. It's a powerful way to engage with the world. And to make it even more modern, he mentions being fascinated with AI reading the news. Wow, that is very 21st century. Right. It's like he's on top of all these advancements trying to understand how they'll change things, even in the creative world. It makes you think, where is this all heading? It really does. But it shows how multifaceted his interests are. For sure. Okay, before we move on to some specific headlines he found interesting, one more thing. Okay. He recommends a whole bunch of exhibitions and events all over the world. It's like a whirlwind tour. Give us some highlights. Okay, so Sotheby's is launching a new Maison in Hong Kong. Not even sure what that means, honestly. Think of it like a super exclusive space, all luxurious, specifically for showing off and selling like high-end art and luxury goods. Oh, so like top-tier stuff. Exactly. And Sotheby's is a big deal in auction house, so them moving into Hong Kong, it's a sign. A sign of what? That the Asian art market is booming, it's gaining power globally, it's a big shift. Wow, okay. Then on the complete opposite end, he mentions Dead End Gallery, an AI art space in Amsterdam. AI art, huh? That's a whole other can of worms. Right. AI is changing everything, the art world included. It feels like we're on the verge of something big. It's definitely shaking things up, raising all these questions about, like, authorship, what even counts as art anymore? Yeah, and where do humans fit into all this? Exactly. But I think it's more about collaboration, you know? Humans and AI working together, pushing boundaries in ways we can't even imagine yet. That's a cool way to look at it. It's exciting and a bit scary all at the same time. And it seems like Inuma's right there, observing it all, taking it in. Yeah, he's definitely not one to shy away from the new and unknown. It's kind of contagious, honestly. I'm already feeling inspired. Me too. But all right, let's get into some of these headlines that really caught his attention. Let's see what we can unpack. Let's do it. Okay, so one headline, it really jumps out. It claims that reducing salt intake for health is a lie. I saw that. It's like the opposite of what we always hear. Right. And he even points out this recommendation from the article to drink the whole bowl of ramen broth which is usually a no-no, sodium-wise. Yeah, but the, this article, it's from President Online, right? That's a pretty reputable magazine. Yeah, it's a business and current affairs magazine, well-respected in Japan, and they're focusing on salt for specifically older people. Oh. So it's advocating for, like, a moderate amount of salt, but paired with, you know, lots of veggies, balanced diet. So not just cutting salt out completely, more like finding that balance. Yeah, and for older folks, they're saying that could actually be better than going super low sodium. Huh. That's interesting. It's like a simple food choice, but then it opens up this whole discussion about health and aging. I mean, cultural attitudes towards food, too. Right. right. Totally. It's like Inamuma uses these little news bits to jump into these bigger themes. He's not just reading headlines. He's thinking about them. He's engaging with the information. Yeah, looking for different perspectives. Uh, which is what we're trying to do here, too. Mm. Okay, another headline that caught my eye. The first public middle high school in Aichi Prefecture. Oh, yeah. I saw him mention that. And knowing his interest in 2E and gifted learners, I bet that's why it stood out to him. Yeah. What do you think? Why would that resonate with him? Well, this new school, it probably represents a move towards, like, individualized learning, you know, recognizing that not all kids learn the same way. Yeah, that makes sense. And 2E, that stands for twice exceptional. So kids who are gifted but also have learning disabilities. Oh, right. They often get overlooked in traditional schools. Exactly. So this new school, it could be a way to create an environment where they can actually thrive. So more inclusive, more responsive to different learning styles. Yeah. And that could tie into Inuma's artistic philosophy, too. You know, like as an artist, he's all about expressing yourself in unique ways. Yeah. And maybe he sees a connection there with education needing to be just as individualistic. It's a beautiful thought, isn't it? Fostering that creativity in future generations. Totally. Okay, let's shift gears a bit to movies. He's super excited about Mission. Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2 calls it one of the best sequels ever. Oh, Mission Impossible. Those are always fun, but sequels are hard to get right. They are. So what do you think makes a good sequel, especially for a franchise like that? It's going to respect the original, you know? But also, 
take the story somewhere new, keep it exciting. That's tough balance. It is. But it sounds like Dead Reckoning Part 2 nailed it, the action, the story, all while staying true to what people love about the series. I'll have to check it out. Now, totally different vibe. He mentions this upcoming Indian film, Kalki 2898 AD. Apparently, it has a huge budget, even bigger than RRR. Wow, RRR was amazing visually, so if this tops that, I'm intrigued. I'm not as familiar with Indian cinema, but this sounds like a big deal. It is. Indian cinema is really gaining global attention, and these big-budget productions, they attract top talent, allow for incredible visuals. It's like showing the world what Indian filmmaking can do. Exactly. It's pushing boundaries, and I'm excited to see where it goes. And speaking of pushing boundaries, back to the art world, remember that Sotheby's Maison in Hong Kong? Yeah, the luxury art space. What about it? So you explained what a Maison is, but why is this move to Hong Kong so significant? Like, bigger picture? Well, Sotheby's, they're strategically positioning themselves in the Asian art market, which is growing rapidly. Makes sense. Hong Kong, it's become a hub for collectors, so this dedicated space. It's a way to connect with those high-end clients to sell that top-tier art. So it's about access, but also about recognizing the power of the Asian market. Absolutely. It's a shift in the global art landscape, for sure. And then, total contrast, we have Dead End Gallery, that AI art space in Amsterdam. Yeah, AI art, it's still so new, so uncharted. It feels like every time we talk about AI, there are more questions than answers. Right, like what even IS art in this new age? And what's the role of the human artist? Big questions. But instead of seeing AI as a threat, I think it's an opportunity, a new tool for exploration. Like a collaboration between human and machine? Exactly. We could see completely new forms of art emerge from this, stuff we haven't even thought of yet. It's both exciting and mind-boggling. Definitely. And Enuma, he's right there in the thick of it, watching it all unfold. He seems to really embrace those unknowns, those possibilities. He does, and that's inspiring, to be open to those new horizons. So Enuma mentions a few more international art events starting with the Bangkok Art Biennale, which yeah. we talked about earlier. Yeah, that's a great example of artists from all over coming together, sharing their work, their perspectives. It's like a global conversation through art. Exactly. And you discover new artists, new styles. It's a way to broaden your horizons. And then a bit more niche. He recommends this exhibition in Los Angeles, all about basketball and art. Oh, that's interesting. What a unique combination. Right. What do you think is driving this trend of like connecting art with things you wouldn't expect. I think art is breaking free from those traditional boundaries. You know, it's not just in galleries anymore. It's in pop culture, sports, everyday life. It makes it more accessible, more relevant to people. Absolutely. It's like saying art is everywhere if you know where to look. Okay, then he mentions a new wing at the American Museum of Natural History, the Richard Gilder Center, but he compares it to the Berlin club scene. Wait, what? That's a weird comparison. A natural history museum and a club. Right. But maybe it's about creating an experience, something immersive, engaging. It's like going beyond the typical museum exhibits, maybe using technology, installations. Making it more interactive, more exciting, more like a, well, a club. Yeah. It's about making learning fun, pushing those boundaries. So it's not just what you learn, but how you learn it. Exactly. And Enuma, he clearly appreciates places that are willing to experiment to create those unique experiences. For sure. He touches on a couple more international events. Dark Matter in Berlin, the Nita Mukesh Ambani Cultural Center in Mumbai. Wow, all over the map, literally. It's like he's on a global art quest. And art is such a great way to experience different cultures, to understand different perspectives. It transcends language. It connects people on a deeper level. Absolutely, and I think that's what Enuma is drawn to, that shared human experience. Okay, and finally, back to Japan. He recommends the Okayama Art Experience which seems to blend art with the natural beauty of the region. Oh, that sounds lovely. What's the appeal of these kinds of events where art is integrated into, like, landscapes or urban spaces? I think it creates this dialogue, you know? Between the art and its surroundings, you see both in a new light. It's like art isn't just the separate thing. It's a part of the world we live in. Yeah, it's woven into the fabric of our experiences. And it makes you appreciate those everyday moments, those unexpected connections. And you know, is great at finding those hidden gems, those little sparks of beauty and inspiration. He really is. It's like a reminder to keep our eyes open, to be curious. Okay, before we wrap up, let's circle back to some of those headlines that really grabbed his attention, starting with that salt article, the one that claimed reducing salt is a lie. Oh, yeah, that was a bold statement. 
It really was, especially since we're always told to cut back on salt. Yeah, it was, especially for, well, you know, for older folks. That's who the article is talking about. Right, right, from President Online. Exactly. And it wasn't saying, like, salt is good for everyone. More Like, for older people, moderate salt, especially with a good diet. Lots of veggies, all that. Yeah, a balanced diet. It could be better than going, like, super low sodium. That's what they were arguing. And even suggesting, like... Finishing your ramen broth, which is usually considered the salty no-no. Yeah. It was definitely, like, a provocative take. And in Numa, he seems to like those ideas, the ones that challenge what we think we know. Makes you rethink things, for sure. And I wonder, with this article, if he's also thinking about different cultures and how they view food and health, especially as people get older. Oh, that's interesting, yeah, because what's healthy in one culture might be totally different in another. Exactly, and how those ideas change as we age, it's all connected. And it seems like in Enuma, he's interested in those nuances, those different perspectives. You know, just taking things at face value, always digging deeper, that's what makes this so interesting. Totally agree. Okay, the other headline, the one about the new middle high school in Aichi Prefecture. That one really stood out, especially with Enuma's focus on 2E and gifted learners. Right. That new school, it probably signals a, a move towards, like, really personalized learning, you know? Recognizing that different kids have different strengths, different needs. Yeah, instead of that one-size-fits-all approach. Exactly. And 2E, that's twice exceptional, right? Kids who are gifted but also have learning disabilities. Right. And those kids often struggle in traditional schools. Yeah, they don't always fit in. So this new school could be a way to, like, create a space where they can actually thrive. So more inclusive, more flexible. Exactly. And I think that probably resonates with Enuma's artistic side, you know? How so? Well, artists, they're always pushing boundaries, thinking outside the box. Yeah, they don't follow the rules. And maybe he sees a connection there. Like, education should be just as individualized as artistic expression. Wow, that's a really cool way to connect those ideas. It's all about nurturing that individual potential. Yeah. Whether it's art or education, it's about letting people shine in their own unique way. It's been amazing, this whole deep dive going through Enuma's world. It's like, he sees inspiration everywhere. He really does, from video games to coffee to, like, serious news and cutting-edge art. It's all connected for him. And he blends it all so seamlessly. It's right? not like separate boxes. It's all part of this, like tapestry of his perspective. And what's so inspiring is how he draws those connections between things that seem totally different. Yeah, like he shows us that creativity isn't just about art. It's a way of looking at the world, a way of thinking. And he encourages us to do the same, to be curious, to ask questions, to find those unexpected connections in our own lives. He's definitely challenged us to rethink some of our own assumptions, to see things from a new angle. And that's what it's all about, right? Expanding our horizons, finding beauty in the unexpected. It's been a journey for sure. And on that note, to our listener, we leave you with this question. What seemingly unrelated things in your life could be connected? What hidden threads are waiting to be discovered? Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.